Boy, can I call it or can I call it? I knew a confidence interval was coming. Okay, so now we're going to be making a confidence interval for the difference between two proportions, population proportions. And again, the samples are considered to be independent. Um, dependent ones are kind of their own kettle of fish. Okay, so we've got a formula right here, and you'll have to forgive me. I already did this problem, and then my computer completely freaked out on me and ate it. So you just have to bear with me here for a second. But I typed up the formula right here. And you can see that it's the same formula as that above. But everywhere there was number one, I put a little, like this is a little TV watching. And then number two, I put a lot. All right, so I wrote it out. And then I got these numbers. Now you're thinking, okay, where do you get those numbers from? Ah, but if I go to stat and I go to tests and I go down, I don't do the T, or excuse me, the one. The two prop Z test, excuse me, I skip that over because I'm not doing a test on this one. And I go to two prop Z int right there, letter B. Two proportions, because this is a difference in proportions, Z because it's Z alpha over two, interval because it's an interval. So let me grab that. Okay. So now my numbers are still in there from before. If I if they weren't, of course, I'd just retype them. But it was 5, 88, 154, 619. My confidence level is 0.95. So I go down to calculate and press enter. And there we go. So you can see I got the P1 hat right here from 0.0568. And the P2 hat is 0.2488. And then I filled in all those parts. And 1 was 88 and 2 was 619. Now where did I get the 1.96 from? Oh, and I wrote the answer. See right there. Now the 1.96 comes from, if you use inverse norm, because this is a normal curve, that's why it's using the z, and I take 0 0.025, close parentheses, enter, there it is, negative 1.96, okay, actually that got a little freaky on me, there we go, <laughs> and again the negative positive thing, you don't have to worry about the, cal uh, excuse me, the formula takes care of that with the plus minus symbol in there. All right, now notice, hopefully you notice, what's not in the interval. All right, hold on, let me a sec. Okay, here's how to interpret it. We can say we are 95% certain that the difference in percentage of aggression levels is between 25.11 and 13.28%. The negative positive thing doesn't really matter. That's just a factor of which number I put in front. If I had put the a lot in front, then they would have been positive. If I put the little in front, then they're negative. So it's, it's kind of six in one hand, half dozen in the other. But notice that zero is not in the interval. And that further backs up our decision that we made when we hypothesis tested this, which was to reject the null hypothesis. If they were equal, then their difference would be equal to zero. And then you'd have zero in the middle of your interval. But because you don't, that's more reason to reject your null hypothesis. Okay, now there's only one other bit down here, and I'm not going to do all of it because most of it is not with the calculator. I just wanted to show you one thing right here, that you can use normal CDF to find your p-value for a two-tailed test. So let me show you how. Let me, let me type up this particular z test, test statistic. Excuse me, I'll be right back. Okay, if you go through all the steps, you'll find that in step three that your test statistic is this value right here, which is really huge. All right, so we know something funky is going to go on. So step four, when you want to find your p-value, what you can do is you can say, okay, I'm going to take the normal CDF, right, and I want to go from 10.8 to forever, 1e99. And I've got that value. And I can multiply it by two because it's a two-tailed test. So you're really doing two times normal CDF from 10.8 to forever, right? That finds, the normal CDF there finds the area in the tail, and then you multiply it by two in order to make a two-tailed test because that's what this is, a two-tailed test. You found this area, and then you multiply it by two. Either way, it's really darn small in this particular instance because it's 3.5 E negative 27. That's 26 zeros and then a three. Really, really, really small, all right? So we would reject, you know, the null hypothesis and all of that. But I just wanted to show you how to do this. Reject null because P, which is 3.5 E negative 27, is definitely less than any alpha you were going to pick. All right, we're all done with chapter 11.